OK, let's now create a multi-device application for uploading and downloading data uh, to a simple storage bucket. This time I'm going to create a new multi-device application C++. I'm going for a, to go for a blank application template and I'm going uh, to save it in some uh, convenient uh, location. For example, I'm going to call it S3CPP and that's fine. I'm going to keep, keep unit 1 as the uh, name of main, main form. <laughs> Click on save all the default names and it's going to be S3CPP uh, for the project name. OK, click on save. So I have an empty multi-device C++ application. The first thing to do is to add an Amazon connection info from the cloud category uh, to the form. So I'm double click on the Amazon connection info component to add it to the form. So right now uh, it is already added. It has properties account key and account name that I need to fill in with the credential that I have generated with the identity and access management service. So for this I need to actually jump to my to my uh, notepad. I'm going to copy the um, the access uh, key to the account name property and the add the, the secret key. I'm going to copy into the account key. OK, so in this way I can now access uh, the cloud um, on behalf of the uh, user that I have uh, created. So our application is going to be very simple. I'm going to uh, just uh, add uh, to it an edit box and um, we are going to have functionality to take the text uh, from the edit box uploaded to the our uh, RAD Studio uh, test bucket and also uh, to perform the second operation to download the contents of this object and display it in the message box. OK, so I have an edit box. I'm going to add uh, two button components to the form. OK, one button will be called button and the BTN, BTN upload. OK, so I'm going to change the text property to be just upload and I'm going to copy this component, this button and put a second component for downloading. So button text will be, uh, name will be button download and the uh, text will be just download. OK, so that's uh, that's perfect. So uh, yeah, let's uh, start uh, writing some code. I'm going to, if I click on upload uh, click, uh, I have an empty body of an on-click handler. But let's have a look into the uh, header file. Uh, so the header file of our form uh, already contains these two uh, include files to um, access the RAD Studio uh, namespace for different cl types uh, that uh, um, are part of the cloud API. So we have uh, in Amazon API uh, there are different um, classes. One of it, uh, one of those classes is uh, the Amazon Storage Service that I need to instantiate uh, such an, a reference and pass to its constructor a reference to our Amazon to our Amazon Cloud. So what I'm going here is I'm going to uh, just uh, define a reference to an Amazon uh, storage uh, service and just uh, I'm going to just uh, call it uh, call, where is my star somewhere here. I can just copy it from here. I have a strange keyboard here. Uh, so I'm going to do an S3 uh, equals a new T Amazon storage uh, service and I'm going to pass as a parameter Amazon connection info. OK, so that's the first thing. So now somewhere at the bottom of the this handler I can just delete this reference. I'm going to use an, a functionality to upload an 
object so upload object so this um, this method is accept, uh, expecting a bucket name so in our case this is going to be a rat studio test one the name of the object that we need to assign and also a dynamic uh, array of bytes with the row bytes that we want to upload to this uh, service so to keep our code a little bit more uh, yeah, elegant I'm going to uh, define two constants or two variables global variables because I'm going to use it in different places so that's going to be my uh, name of the bucket is going to be rat studio test one and the name of my, my object could be anything for example this could be a test object one okay so in this way I can just use those names as parameters to my to my uh, code object object no it's not exactly this object object name okay so the third parameter is uh, just a dynamic array of bytes so I need to somehow convert the uh, string from the edit into the array of bytes for this probably the most easy way is to to use a string uh, stream class uh, so I'm going to do a string string so the new and t string stream and as a parameter to this uh, constructor I'm going to take the contents of the edit and just whatever is in the edit I'm going to put it into the string stream so now I can just uh, pass the string stream but it has a convenient uh, property called bytes and that's exactly what we are uh, needing here the dynamic array of bytes okay so I can actually now display a message so if uh, this call uh, returns true so that was uh, it was successful I can just display a message show message uh, that everything went okay so uh, up for example just okay now that will be okay and it, if it was not okay I'm going to display a similar message that upload failed okay upload upload failed okay I'm also need to make sure that I'm also deleting the reference to my string stream and I'm good okay let's see if this is actually working so if I run the application I can now just put something here like hello hello from C++ builder and Amazon cloud okay so I'm going to upload it and it gives me an okay message this means that this string has been uploaded uh, okay I'm going to close the application and now I'm going to implement the opposite functionality to download uh, this um, this uh, string so I'm going to copy a lot of the already existing code because I need to instantiate again the simple storage reference a simple storage service reference uh, I'm also going to uh, instantiate a string stream but this time without an text because this is going to be uh, this string stream is going to receive uh, data from the cloud and the method is not upload object but get object and it has all the same functionality but the difference is that we just pass a string stream itself because it can be any descendant of a t stream class so if this is working okay we are going to just display the data string property of our string and if there is a false then we can display a message that download failed okay let's run this application and see how it's working click on download 
and we have hello from C++ Builder and Amazon Cloud. Okay, that's it. We got the C++ Builder multi-device application to upload and download data to Amazon Simple Storage Service.